I want to talk about Andrew Tate, man. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Mm, before that, sorrow. Here is something interesting, living fully today, but knowing that we might get another chance to do better tomorrow. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Definitely. Definitely. You know, we get another chance. That's the thing. But we take that for granted because, you know, technically we've been waking, we've been sleeping and waking up every morning. But just that, for example, mountain of inspiration, comment ça va? What's going on? What's going on, King? Blessings, blessings, blessings. Indeed, indeed. Um, this is the thing, right? Gratitude is, I think, um, um, it, it is a heavy conversation, but it's light at the same time. But yeah, you know, you know how we do. We get deep. We get deep, brother. Um, you know, I think gratitude is the biggest secret that maybe isn't told or is told that people overlook. And it's very simple words that, that can be, you know, compared as mantras. Hmm. Hmm. Giving thanks for the air you breathe every day. You know, giving thanks for the life in you and around you. Giving thanks, to, because that's the thing. You, you, Whomever, whatever you believe in, it, as long as you understand that you are the fruit of a creation, you know, whatever that creation might be to you is fine. Gratitude for you being you is essential. And so, you know, if you apply the sense of gratitude for the moment you have as you cross paths with somebody, you know, and they greet you or they take, you know, they just act kind to you, gratitude. It may not come natural for a lot of people. I know that. And I wasn't always as grateful as I am. I was grateful, but not, I am, I, I, I'm so grateful that I'm grateful for the things that are not so nice in my life. You know, um, when my mother passed away last year on February the 15th, um, 2022, I was here in Portugal. You know, um, I had to say goodbye over the phone. But I gave thanks that at least my older brother and my younger sister and their kids, their eldest kids, were with her. I was in excruciating pain. My heart bled because you've got to understand, I'm a mommy's boy. I'm a mommy's boy, but not in the spoiled sense of the term, but I was spoiled, yes, in the sense that my mother showered all of us with love and showered me with, with love. And, and, and we had... Um, we had a relationship as a as a mother and son and son and mother that was um, profound, profound, yeah, um, almost friends like friend like. But I would never say that my mother was a friend because I had too much respect and too much. Um, uh, in French, we call it pudeur. I don't know how you say that in English. But you know, yeah, ah, uh, man, God rest her soul. But I love my mother daily and I give thanks I give thanks I give thanks because I knew that you know what not that I'm thankful that my mother left this world of course not why would I be thankful that my mother left this world you know but what can I do you know um, I believe in God I believe that you know it was a time you know uh, the, 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 the way she passed on was terribly painful it was very sudden very unexpected and um um ever more so painful you know and unfair but death is unfair death is unfair it hits when you don't expect it or even and maybe sometimes you're lucky enough to expect it and get to prepare yourself and do what you need to do and and leave eventually peacefully but some humans don't get that chance, you know? And well, that's okay. This is what their purpose was, they served it. And what can you do, you know? Um, 
and people might say, yeah, but you know, if you have a, you know, if a, if a child dies, uh, uh, would you say the same thing? They haven't even lived their lives, etc. Look, no words can can heal your pain, no words. But you see, um, when you get to when you get, I mean, that, that, that's really tough. Um, but when you're able to reach a level of faith and gratitude for life that you you even through these very terribly painful moments still able to give thanks because you've had that experience because you've you know you've been able to experience that child for example my mother I lost my older brother when I was um oof when I was uh, j'ai perdu mon grand frère my mother's my first son uh, my mother's first son sorry uh, so my older brother our older brother uh, my siblings and I when I was 10 years old I think um, and the pain my mother told me she could still feel that pain even 30 years later, 30 plus years later. But I don't know. She's developed a strength and a spiritual connection with her son. Uh, we all developed a connection with our brother, respectively. Um, my siblings and I, that's very unique to all of us. And acceptation is one of the deepest and most complicated thing to achieve. But, you know, it's necessary. It's necessary. And, um, you know, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Sora. I appreciate that. You know, uh, we say, uh, we say well, most of us are not grateful for the little moments we have because we tend to wait on the big things. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Emery Agnon said our mother is our God on earth. Absolutely. But you know what? Our fathers, we have, a, we give our fathers a bad rep because I don't know why, but we overlook the fathers and yes i won't lie to you i lost my father in 2014 it was one of one of the most difficult exp i mean it's there's nothing that compares to it and yes losing your mother is even is is the same pain but deeper that's right it's true it's true this can be explained because of relationship that we have as sons with our mothers our daughters with our, as daughters with our mothers because you know we 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 feed from their breast and we they hold us so close to them, even as we grow adults, etc. We 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 have this different relationship, father indeed, because it's the authority in the house. There's gonna be maybe a bit of more of a conflictual relationship. But me, I am blessed that I'm the kind of son I love both my parents equally the same. I did not love one more than more than the other. It's the, that concept didn't even make sense to me. So, you know, I have to say, thank God for giving me that heart and the capacity to love both of them, you know. Um, uh, yeah, equally the same. But yeah, I understand that, um, you know, as you said, the, 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 the learning process, the learning phase, the learning curve, you know, to, to be able to start appreciating small things is difficult because, you know, again, it's small things like, you know, for example, I'll, um, well, and, and one of the... For example, if you go through a phase in your life where you don't have money, you can't afford, you know, uh, a decent meal, which are um, moments that I've gone through in my life. Um, I, I, I have to tell you, it's a very humbling moment. Uh, it's a very humbling moment because you realize that, um, yeah, it's deep. It's a deep conversation tonight, brother. Indeed, 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 sir. But I've realized that, um, <clears throat> you know, in these moments, uh, when you when you find that oh snap, in the cupboard I have a I have a I have that little you know bag of rice, I have a bit of oil, some salt. Well, I can do something, right? You figure out that very quickly that that is a blessing, and that can hold you up for the next couple of days, you know, until you see coming something coming through. But there's something that somebody oh this is beautiful. Um, I'm, I, I, this weekend, I didn't feel like, you know, a friend of mine was celebrating her birthday and, um, 
she was like, look, I need you to come to the birthday, please, you know, come through. I said, look, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to because, well, I have a, I had a studio session on Saturday, but then, you know, I managed to, you know, postpone it. I mean, actually, I told them to do their thing because they didn't really need me. To, like, people want you to be in the studio so you can, so they can, you know, just, I guess, flaunt, which is cool, but I was just not in the mood to be in the studio with anybody and, you know, to be, uh, to be part of any, like, Instagram post, anything like that. And... Uh, <clears throat> So I decided to go. It's far, you know. Where she celebrated her birthday was a bit far. Um, it was an hour and a half away from my house. And, you know, sorry for the noise. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I decided to go. You know, took Uber, went there, got there. You know, anyway. And then I met this gentleman, you know. Um, at first, you know, we just shook hands and that was it. Mm. Mm. Rosa Ham, the pain never disappears. We just learn to live with it. Absolutely. That's why, you know, let me get to that story. You, it's going to echo exactly what you just said. So, you know, eventually, um, you know, we get seated. It's a you know, massive celebration. She really went all out, you know, it's, you know, like she rented out this massive estate and, you know, there's like, um, you know, gourmet chefs, this and that. It's, no, dope. So um, I get seated next to this gentleman um, who is a very successful businessman, you know, an African brother from Togo uh, who runs a, a very successful, you know, business in America, uh, multi-million dollars business uh, in the sports world and a very humble guy, a really, really humble dude, like honestly humble to the core. So... That's my vibe, you know. I was on the, the table. I was uh, I was uh, uh, the table I was at was a table of heavy heavy weights, you know, um, financially as well. Um, and all of the guys were really cool, you know. All of some of them were like, you know, um, uh, investors. Uh, some of them were into the you know the football realm, da 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 da. Movie directors. I mean, you know, you name it. Anyways, um, and me and his brother would start talking. And we talk and, you know, quickly it gets very deep. And um, he um, he and I, we start talking about, you know, struggles in life and what he went through. And he came from very, very uh, humble, if not uh, close to even poor family, as, if, uh, as I paraphrase him. And uh, he made shit happen. But it took courage, resilience, um, 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 audacity, because, you know, to believe in yourself is audacious. It's a bet that most people are not willing to do. And when people are not ready to bet on you, you might give up on yourself because you expect of people to believe in you more than you would believe in yourself. Um, um, Exotic treasure, you're always dropping gems, always deep. Thank you, thank you very much. We try, you know, um, I can only drop what I experience and I'm glad it resonates with you. And um, um, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. <clears throat> and so this brother and I, we talk about, you know, what he went through and he literally had just lost his mother a couple of days before that event. And I look at this man very, very, man, I even have goosebumps talking about this, like literally, literally. I mean, I was touched by the courage and um, the pride, there was elegance and pride in his in his grief. It's It was, um, oh man, I was so inspired. I said, look, brother, uh, first of all, my condolences and, you know, let me just tell you that you're one of the strongest brothers I've, I've ever got to meet, man, because... You literally just lost your mom four days ago. Seriously, much fucking respect. And you're able to come. He's like, no, I had to, you know, you know, it's, you know, it's a commitment I had. I have to be there. And, you know, uh, tomorrow, starting tomorrow, I'm going to be getting into that. You know, it's a different vibration for sure. So, yeah. I'll fuck with that. Sense of priorities. You know, some people might say, well, it's a sense of priority. You're going to a birthday party. You, that's the thing. Right? If you think about it, 
I was almost not going to that birthday party. He had all the reasons in the world not to go. But yet we still went and we met. And we clicked in a way that he was like, yo, man, everything that you say, fuck, we are very similar. I say, and then he vice versa. I was like, yo, for reals, man, this is deep. Kindred souls. You, when you expect it, the least is when you're going to be exposed to things that appear to be very, very finite, but are, are grand jewels in your life. And we may never speak again after that. Even though we exchange numbers, we may, God knows, we don't know. But that moment, that celebration of life, that um, combination of minds, that um, um, reunion of spirits brought to life something very powerful. The acknowledgement that gratitude is the essential necessity especially when you go through tough times. You've got to be able to still, even though you're not willing to smile, but if you meet somebody, you got to be able to put a smile on your face. It might not necessarily be honest. It might not necessarily be the realest smile, but you still try to give love to people. You still try to acknowledge that, you know, yes, what you're going through is fucked up, but you don't know what someone else is going through. So therefore, let me not be an ass. Let me be grateful. Because this experience, as fucked up as it is, whatever it is that I'm going through, is there to strengthen me. But this is a choice. This, you know, again, some people don't even think like that. Some people are just like, you know, fuck that. I don't want the stress. Da 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 da, da And they start closing themselves off, and they 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 reject the real world, and they they start building their own sort of like space of comfort, which understandably is the kind of um, attitude someone might have of course who i mean that's why i respect fighters so much you know to willingly go towards punches and and feel and be hurt and get your your bones broken etc it is very 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 courageous best believe me when i used to be a competitor in brazilian jiu-jitsu i'm a blue belt heavyweight brazilian jiu-jitsu by the way um even though I've not practiced since quite some time now, but um, um, when I was competing back then, um, 2016 uh, and 17, um, trust me, I was shitting my pants. Literally, I was like, no, what the fuck am I doing? But then, you know, my my, my mestre, my coach, my, my team was like, yo, it's time, let's go. And it's time, we gotta go. Can't, can't run away. You got to go. And it's okay if you lose. It's okay. You've learned something. I lost my first fight uh, just because I was tired and, 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 I, and, I over, and I overdone my cardio. So the guy, the, and, and the funny thing, the guy, the guy rolled with me at the time I was a blue belt. I was a white belt. And the guy that rolled with me was a blue belt acting as a white belt, which is actually incorrect. But anyways. Being that I was trained by a very, my, my, my trainer is, man, he's a bone breaker. I mean, literally that was his, you know, um, sir, his um, nickname in the in the fighting world. That guy is super heavyweight. Uh, look at me, he's literally two sizes bigger than me. Like larger, he's, he's just a fucking monster, but the sweetest guy ever. Um, but yeah, when it comes to, you know, getting getting down, whew, that guy is a beast. And, and, you know, learning from him, you know, as heavyweights, we have to move in a certain way. You can't, there's certain things you cannot do in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu if you're a heavyweight. You know, it's, I mean, you can't, it depends on everybody's body structure, da 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 da. da. And so, you know, I lost just by points, uh, but I still lost, fine. And so I did another, um, there was another fight. Um, I had to fight the same guy another time. I don't know how it worked out, but I had to fight that guy again. And um, that guy didn't show up. So supposedly, that's what I've heard. They were not expecting me to be that tough. Um, and so in this world, for whatever reason, 
you know, egos get bruised very, very quickly, especially if guys really do this for, that's their life, that's their, that's their everyday thing. You know, and it's not for me. I mean, I love the, I love the art. I love the, I love the martial art and I understand the philosophy. For me, I'm doing it for me and I, and I enjoyed and I felt and, and I understood the necessity for me to go through the fire by attending competitions because it's, it's a self-challenging thing. Um, and eventually him not showing up, well, by default, I was, I was, I was given bronze, you know, third place in my categories, which was like, you know, white belt, heavyweight bronze. And I was like, oh shit. Well, here we go. Because I was there, I showed up. I was there ready to fight. The guy never showed up. Maybe he was there, maybe he wasn't, doesn't matter. Got the bronze, cool. Lesson to that is what? I was grateful I learned the lesson. I didn't go there with an ego. I went there with humility. I shook hands with that guy and we worked. And we worked and I worked humbly because first of all, I'm not here to disrespect him, but I'm here to win. You know, this is not a, you know, it's not a game. It, well, it's a game, but it's not a game. It's very serious. I have to be serious about, you know, the craft that I've learned and that the knowledge that I've acquired has to show in that specific moment. And it has showed, you know, and um, my weaknesses also have shown, you know, lack of um, cardio. So, you know, went back and we worked on that. But bottom line is by, by going through tough things, by experiencing tough moments in life and overcoming and, and, Overcoming them in parts alone, but having the right people around you will help you go a long way. That's why it is important to know who are next to you when shit hits the fan. You can never call people friends, people who are there, only when everything is amazing, glitters and fun and this and that. And this is not a friend. Well, you may call them party friends, cool, but this is not a friend. A friend in the true and absolute sense of the term. In my personal understanding and consideration, I have buddies. I have a lot of buddies, but I have few friends.